Ever since KC Neistat unboxed the first generation booster board, I immediately knew I had to have one myself. But they costed over $2,000. So three years later, I decided to build one. I wanted to DIY it because I like to know how things are built and if any problems come up, I immediately know how to fix it. So here's my journey on how I built my own electric skateboard. For the battery pack, I used dual 5S Turnergy lithium polymer cells from HobbyKing.com. These cells give me a range of 22.3 kilometers on completely flat terrain and 12 kilometers on average in a city with a lot of slopes and hills. Keep in mind, I weigh 130 pounds. I would not recommend using lithium polymer cells when building an electric skateboard for the following reasons. Number one. To charge a lithium polymer battery, you need a balance charger that will charge the cells independently to the correct voltage. A good quality lithium polymer charger costs around $60 to $120. The one used in this video is the ISDT SC620 and it costs $100. Second, compared to the standard lithium ion 18650 cells, which is used in the popular Tesla Model S and the X, or the 2700 cells, which is used in the newer Model 3, they are less forgiving when handled carelessly or incorrectly. Carelessness will result in a fire or the explosion of a cell. I am not saying that a different type of battery will not explode or catch on fire, but lithium polymer cells require extra care compared to the other battery chemicals. And lastly, lithium polymer cells have fewer charge cycles compared to the 18650 or the 2700 cells. 18650 cells can be charged fully and depleted to 0% 500 times before needing to re be replaced and 3000 times for the 2700 cells. Just compare that to the 200 times that the lithium polymer battery has. That's almost a 2.5 times improvement. Well, why did I use lithium polymer cells then? The reason is that it is significantly cheaper than the 18650 battery pack and also, I can charge incredibly faster compared to an 18650 battery pack of the same price range. My friend's pre-built electric skateboard that uses a 4.4 amp hour, 2 parallel 18650 battery pack charges at 2.5 amps max, whereas when I'm in a rush, I can charge at 7 amps. That's almost a 3 times faster charge improvement. But, if I was able to redo this longboard build, I would have gone with the 18650 battery pack for simplicity and aesthetics. The deck is one of the most important factors in the amount of vibrations you feel. The flexier your deck is, the fewer vibrations you feel from riding. Then, why don't we use the deck with the most flex then? It is because the flexier your deck is, the more unstable you are when you reach fast speeds. So for my longboard, I used a bamboo composite deck that was custom made based on the loaded vanguard shape, as that was the most popular option of decks in the Eastgate community, thanks to Boosted using them in the first and second generation Boosted boards. The deck is pretty flexy, but not as flexible as the loaded vanguard. To me, this is the perfect amount. Also, I modeled a bash guard in Fusion 360 and 3D printed it to protect my deck from wearing when I stood the board upwards. It was 3D printed at a 0.25mm layer height at a 20% infill in PET G. The drivetrain I used were dual 90mm 1000W hub motors. These hub motors work great. They provide great power, smooth cruising, and are capable of pushing me up a 20 degree incline at speeds up to 25 kilometers per hour. The bearings inside the motors have not degraded even after a thousand kilometers of riding and riding them through the rainy falls that we have here in Vancouver, BC. These hub motors also have great thermal dissipation. I was pushing it hard on the throttle for a 10 kilometer ride at a 30 kilometer per hour pace average speed and they only reached a 45 degree max. But unfortunately, these exact hub motors are not available online because newer versions of them have come out. The newer versions have an easier way to replace the urethane covers on the wheels. Currently, I need to take the motor apart to replace them, but with the new version, the urethane is a slip-on cover over the motors. If you would like to build a similar longboard, I would recommend the Inertion Raptor hub motors or the DIYelectricskateboard.com dual belt drive kit for a torquier, faster experience.
The ESC used is the version 2.1 FOC ESC controller. It is one of the cheapest ESCs on the market and it supports up to 10 amps on each terminal. The controls are overall not that great. The controls in the low end feel imprecise and jumpy, and on the near top, they feel too soft. If the throttle curve could be adjusted on this ESC and the amperage was increased, this ESC would be a total game changer. But at the end of the day, this is just a $70 ESC. Also, many eboards seem to have problems with remotes disconnecting from their boards while riding and throwing their riders off. This has never happened to me and my remote has powered up and worked every time ever since it first arrived. The remote is using the 2.4 GHz frequency to connect to the ESC and even in riding in populated places it has never had a problem. I took the controller apart to see how it was built and it seems really well put together. Now, for the most important question. The fastest I have gone is 37 km per hour on a flat surface while the battery is above 75%. If you consider building an electric skateboard similar to mine, you have to consider that I only weigh 60 kg to hit those speeds. I originally used the enclosures from the Meeple Board V2 because they were the cheapest a year ago. They worked great for the period that I used it. In June, I decided to completely remodel the enclosure design. After three iterations, I concluded on this. It looks much sleeker and is based on the boosted board enclosure. I 3D printed it in PETG at a 0.25 layer height and a 20% infill. The battery enclosure remained the same because it works well but scratches easily when you hit rocks or ride off a sidewalk. I also put velcro and multiple layers of foam tape inside to keep the battery from rattling. After 1400 kilometers, this board has been the best thing I have ever built. It is extremely useful for quick errands around the community and super fun for casual rides with friends. I even convinced one of my friends to purchase one. I would like to conclude with, if you are looking to build an electric skateboard, no matter what brand it is, you should always wear a helmet and sufficient safety gear. These skateboards are very dangerous and can reach very high speeds. Another thing I would like to say is that I recommend you not use the cheapest parts available when building your electric skateboard because when you're riding on the street with traffic, you do not want cheap parts cutting you out and throwing you onto incoming traffic. The next video that will come out will be on the X-Way X1 Pro. I am officially an X-Way Boards brand ambassador as of recording this for X-Way Canada Technologies. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can.